sample and sampling methods. This video talks about population, sample and sampling methods. The part 1 explains about the probability sampling method. So what is population? In, in research, the population is aggregation of all the units as per the researcher's interest. So the term population refers to the aggregate or totality of all the objects, subjects or members who possess similar characteristics. So if the researcher is interested in uh, under 5 children, so then all the under 5 children in the country is coming under the population. Types of population. So there are two types of population. One is target population and that the one is accessible population. So what is target population? The entire group of people who meet the criteria of the research. For example, if the researcher needs to study the problems faced by nursing students. So the population refers to all the nursing students in India. Accessible population. In this it is a subset of target population in which the researcher has accessible. So, for example, if the researcher is staying in a Tamil Nadu or a Kerala state, his accessible population is the people who is living in the state. Or it can be the area or the city or an institution. So, for example, if the researcher's interest is nursing students, the target population is the entire nursing students of India, whereas the accessible population here it is the students of Crescent College of Nursing where he is working. Sample. So what is sample? It is defined as a representative unit of a target population which is to be worked upon by the researchers during their study. So the one representative who is having the characteristics of the entire population is considered as in sample. The sample consists of subsets of units which comprise the population selected by investigators or researchers to participate in their research projects. So, so this is the um, diagrammatic representation of population and sample. So the big circle outside is called population. So and the next coming circle is said to be target population and this is the accessible population. And this, row, this is a sample and this one single subject who is going to be involved in the study. So what is sampling process? There are few terms you should know before starting into the types of sampling methods. So sampling process is the process of selecting observations to provide an adequate description and inferences. So if you are, it is a steps involved in selecting the sample which is called sampling process. What is sampling frame? So before selecting the sample or before start starting the sampling process the researcher has to make a list of his population which is called sampling frame. Selection of sample can be done by homogeneous or heterogeneous method. Homogeneous means the group will have the same characteristics so you can have one sample for all the same kind of characteristics. Here they all are yellow so you can take one yellow person for the selection, I mean for the sample. And here in the heterogeneous group there are different colors or different characteristics where when you select the sample you should make sure that every color or every characteristic is in your group. For example in a group there will be uh, women, men, children so you have to make sure that your sample should include everyone. Sampling process, as we said, it's a process, so it includes few steps. The first one is define the population. So before doing the sampling process, you should know what is your population, and you should know you have to make a sampling frame. As I said, you have to make a list of the population so that you will have an idea of how to, what kind of method, sampling method you are doing, and how you are going to select your samples. Select sampling technique. So what sampling technique you are going to use you have to decide before doing the sampling process. Then you have to determine the sample size and then execute the sampling process. So the sampling process involves defining the population, determining the sampling frame, 
selecting the sampling technique, determining the sample size and executing the sampling process. So there are two types of sampling methods. One is probability sampling method and non-probability sampling method. So probability sampling method is of different types. Simple random cluster sampling, systematic sampling and stratified sam random sampling. And non-probability sampling method consists of convenience, purposive, snowball and quota sampling. So we will talk about probability sampling method in this video. So random selection of elements, members of the population, we say it as probability sampling method. In this, every subject in a population has equal chance to be selected. So what does mean by probability or what does mean by random selection means you are giving the entire population for participating in the, uh, you are giving a chance for the entire population for participating in the research. So every subject in that population will have an equal opportunity to participate in the research study. What are the features of probability samplings or equal chance of being selected, equal opportunity for selection, absence of both systematic and sampling bias and complete elimination of sampling bias. So you are giving the entire population a chance so it is the best way to select sample in your research study. The first one is simple random sampling method. Here all subsets of the frame are given an equal probability. So how will you give an equal probability is by method, the method of selection will be a lottery method or developing or bringing random numbers, either using table or generating random numbers with the help of computers. So if you have 100 people in a class, so how you select randomly the students, what you do, you will lot, you will write the lot numbers 1 to 100 and then you will put a lot and you will ask somebody to take it or you yourself can take how much sample you want as per the sample size you will take the numbers or you can generate table or the computer itself can generate you the random numbers if the numbers are too many like thousands and ten thousands if you if your population size is thousand or ten thousand then the computer itself will generate the random numbers so how the sampling process is happening here is identify the population, determine the desired sample size, list all the members of the population, assign all members a list of consecutive numbers. So what you should do, every member you should give a number, an arbitrary starting point from a table. You can either take it from the table or you can ask the computer to generate the numbers. Advantages, minimum knowledge and easy to analyze data so you don't doesn't need a knowledge about the population just you have to give some number and you can select the sample what is the disadvantage low frequency of use in the research the frequency of use is very less simple random does not require researchers expertise doesn't need a researchers knowledge regarding the sampling method larger risk of random error the next one is stratified random sampling the population is divided into two or more groups called strata. So here you will divide the entire population. In this example picture, the researcher is dividing the population into male, female and children. So like this, according to the age or according to the location or the geographical place or grade, you can divide the group and from each group you can select the sample. So what you do here, population, sample size, and you divide, divide them under strata and put the entire population under each strata and equal representative from each strata is taken. What is the advantage? Assures representation of all group in sample group. So you will have a male, female and children. Everyone will be involved in the research. Characteristics of all stratum can be estimated. You can um, analyze the characteristic of a stratum and compare it. For example, if you are going to know the attitude of smoking so you are dividing the strata into age category um, gender category like male female and children what you can you will you can have a comparison data how the male's attitude and how is the female attitude and how is the children's attitude towards the smoking so what is the disadvantage here requires accurate information on proportion of each stratum and stratified list expensive so it is a bit expensive and you need to have accurate information on the complete population. 
cluster sampling. So what is cluster sampling? Process of randomly selecting intact groups not defined within within the defined population sharing similar characteristics. Not like uh, clusters are not like strata. Here what you do, you divide it um, like in as an intact group like either neighborhood or school, district, classroom or uh, people living around the school, people living around the temple, people living around the railway station. So like this you can divide into cluster. Here in this example I have shown you that uh, the cluster is made according to the street. Maple Street, Main Street and Co Street. So according to the street wise you can make cluster as well. And then from each cluster you will take samples. So here in this picture you can see the cluster 1, 2 and 3 and from each cluster you will select sample and you have to make sure what is the sample size before selecting the sample. So here also in this process what happens? You define the population and sample size, make them into a logical cluster into the uh, the whole population is put into the logical cluster and the average number of per cluster is estimated and sample size is made. What is the advantage here? Can estimate the characteristics as like strata you can compare and estimate the characteristics of the cluster and population. One problem is it is expensive and each stage whenever you break into stages there is possibility of sampling error. Next one systematic random sampling. Here what happens you will do a random sampling in a systematic way. So you will make the orders into numbers. Okay, and the nth number you will start with and you will jump and take the nth number. For example here every third person is selected in the study. So the researcher will take first then second one two and three. One two and three. So here you can systematically select the nth number from the whole list. So here also what you do, you define the population, make a sampling frame that is list, determine desired sample size and then you have to set on a nth number. For example, I have 50 students in my class and I want 5 samples. What I do, I will take nth number that is 10th person, 1, 10, 20, 30, 40. So I will get 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So I will have 5 samples in my hand. So you have to decide on the nth number and you will take it accordingly. What is the advantage? Simple, simple method, easy to select, evenly spread over entire population. So you can evenly go through the entire population and can take cost effective. But what is the problem here? Bias sometimes happen. Each element will not get equal chance because between that uh, nth number the people are left so ignored ignorance of all elements between the nth number so you are not at all thinking about the people in between the nth number so the next one is multi stage sampling in this method it is carried out in different stages so you make the group into clusters and again again into stratum and then again into clusters and you will make it into smaller and smaller until you get enough number of Sample. For example, the country can be divided into states, city, urban, rural. So you can take samples from every cluster and you will make it in your research. So this is the example of the multi-stage sampling method. Here the population is divided into groups and again into other groups and strat stratum and then samples are selected. What is the advantage? More accurate and more effective. But it's a costly method. And each stage introduce sampling error. So on the whole, we have discussed through this video what is population, what is sampling, sample, what is sampling process, sampling error, different types of sampling, and probability sampling method. We focused here. And we talked about features and types of probability sampling method. So I have a video already uploaded on non-probability sampling method. Please do watch and support me. Thank you.